Good evening to all of you. I am Dr. Rupali Gaikwad, radiology resident from GMC Mirrors. Today, I will be presenting my original research paper on computed tomography guided laser ablation of osteoid osteoma through a study of 135 patients. Osteoid osteoma is a benign but painful bone lesion that primarily occurs in children and young adults. The most common symptom is bone pain, which often worsens at night and is typically relieved by aspirin or other non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Computed tomography is the imaging modality of choice. The treatment options available for osteoid osteoma are conservative medical treatment, surgical treatment, and percutaneous intervention. Laser photocoagulation is also one method of treating osteoid osteomas. Aim of this study is to present our experience of CT-guided laser ablation of radiologically proven osteoid osteomas in various modes. Materials and methods included 135 cases of osteoid osteoma in different bones diagnosed on various modalities which were treated by CT guided laser ablation. Out of 135 patients, 99 patients were male and 36 patients were female, ranging in the age group of 11 years to 40 years. Informed consent was obtained in all of the patients before undergoing the examination. Bone wise distribution of the cases is shown in this pictorial diagram, which represents osteoid osteoma to be more prevalent in upper end of femur followed by lower end of femur, which is followed by upper end of tibia. Uh, this pie diagram represents distribution of osteoid osteoma according to the gender. We found that osteoid osteoma is more prevalent in males, which constituted 74% of the patients. Uh, in our study, osteoid osteoma is, more is found to be more prevalent in age group of 11 to 20 years. Before the procedure, blood cell count and blood clotting analysis were performed. Procedure was performed on day care basis. Appropriate anesthesia was given. The maximum size of the nidus was 8 mm. Using the images, we adjusted the position of the patient and marked the skin at the plane, uh, plan access point. Painting and draping of the local site was done. Targeted cannulation of the nidus was done using Jamshidi biopsy needle for initial 30 patients. Remaining 105 patients, the cortex was drilled using a 3.5 mm K wire. Jamshidi biopsy needle was inserted under CT guidance and subsequent thermal ablation with a 400 microfiber connected to diode 1940 nanometer laser machine was done for 47 patients and for remaining 88 patients, uh, 1470 nanometer giga laser Vegas system machine with 1000 to 1800 joules energy at 10 watts power was being delivered in continuous mode. Toshiba exfusion was used for 45 patients and Siemens Somento machine was used in remaining 90 patients. After the acquisition of the first scan, the distance and angle of the estimated needle trajectory was recorded. The position of the radio frequency ablation fiber tip in the nidus was confirmed. 1000 to 1800 joules energy was delivered in the lesion in continuous mode. The patient tolerated ablation well, following which they were kept under observation for an hour and no complications developed after the procedure in 134 patients. 59 patients were treated under general anesthesia and remaining 76 patients were treated under sciatic and femoral block. Among which 40% were under sciatic and femoral block and 60% patient were under spinal anesthesia. Post-procedural CT was performed to confirm the lack of the soft tissue swelling and hematoma. No intraprocedural or post-procedural complications were observed. Patients were discharged after 12 hours. This is a plain CT axial image which shows sclerotic lesion with hypodense nidus in the lateral cortex of the diaphysis of left femur. These are the... Uh, coronal and axial stud images of the same patient which revealed focal predominantly cortical oval lighting lesion with appear, which appeared as hypointense on T1 weighted and uh, hyperintense on T2 weighted images and stud images. Diffuse extensive sclerosis and hyperostosis of the bone seen surrounding the lesion appearing as hypointense on both T1 weighted and T2 weighted images. There is mild marrow edema in the adjacent bone uh, which appeared as hyperintense on stud images and uh, which is associated with a mild diffuse soft tissue edema in the surrounding muscles. Hardware equipments were used uh, in this procedure was Jamshidi biopsy needle, uh, which is presented in the right side of the skin. And these are uh, laser machines which were used for providing uh, radio frequency ablation. Uh, this is axial CT image, which shows the tip of the bone biopsy needle is uh, accurately reaching the nidus, following which the laser fiber was introduced into the center of the nidus. This is, uh, uh, this is another patient having osteoid osteoma in medial cortex of the middle third of the diaphysis of tibia. Uh, in these images, we can see uh, that uh, the biopsy needle is well within the nidus. This is another patient having osteoid osteoma in the left facet of the L3 vertebra in subarticular region. 
unfortunately we couldn't store the bone window imaging uh, for the uh, for this patient uh, that's why we had to take a uh, soft tissue window imaging patients were advised no weight bearing activity for one month and follow up after one month 134 patients have complete relief of pain in 24 hours after laser ablation follow up ct and mri was done after one month which revealed mild sclerosis of the nidus uh, this is follow up ct image after one month which showed uh, mild sclerosis of the nidus and this is MRI imaging of the same patient, which revealed uh, air foci in the nidus. Coming to the results, pain reduction was the main purpose for the evaluation of the effectiveness of CT guided laser ablation in our study. 134 patients have complete relief of pain in first 24 hours after laser ablation. No neurologic complications were observed in any of our patients with spinal osteoarostomas. We called patients for follow up after uh, two months, six months, and one year after the procedure. No patient had recurrence or needed any repeat treatment in our study. Post-procedural CT scans confirmed the lack of the soft tissue swelling, edema, or hematoma. All of the patients were able to return to the normal activities within one week. Complete or partial sclerosis of the nidus was observed after 12 months on CT scans in all 135 patients. Only one patient developed complication as fractured neck of femur uh, after the treatment of osteoid osteoma. Coming to the discussion, osteoid osteoma is a benign bone tumor. For treating patients, the nidus should either be completely removed or disrupted. As regards to treatment, currently available options are conservative medical treatment, surgical treatment, and percutaneous intervention. Pain may disappear after several years of conservative treatment of 5 to 6 years. However, long-term medical therapy may be unacceptable due to refractory pain and complications with the chronic use of anti-inflammatory agents. Surgery has been considered as curative treatment. Since intraoperative localization of the nidus, uh, nidus is very difficult, which is usually smaller than 10 mm in maximum diameter and surgical removal of the tumor often necessitates significant bone resection. There are very high chances of recurrence. Laser photocoagulation is also one method of treating osteoarostomes. CT guided radiofrequency ablation has also been accepted as demonstrably safe, minimally invasive and cost-effective treatment for osteoarostoma. Laser photocoagulation has some advantages over radiofrequency ablation. With laser therapy, coagulation and tissue, tissue disruption starts from the probe, which is acting as a point heat source and radiates from the center to the periphery. Uh, coming to the conclusion, CT guided laser ablation has been accepted as a demonstrably safe, minimally invasive, and cost effective treatment for osteoarostomas. These are some references we used for our study. Thank you for giving me this opportunity.